those both sound great. Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I am Will. I am Adam Savage. And I am just Norm. <laughs> Hi, I'm just the only Norm. one with a surname. I'm Will Smith. We come in six packs. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, I used to have a whole bunch of Zaphod Zay- Beeblebox result responses for when I checked into hotels and they're like, oh man, you're Will Smith. You don't look like what I thought you would look like. So what would you say? You know, I, don't you know that we come in six packs now? It's like oh. lines from Zaphod Beeblebox when he introduces in the radio play, especially has a bunch of one lines back when they say, oh my God, you're Zaphod Beeblebox. As well, you know, actually. Uh, you know, um, you can buy right now at Prop Store of London on their website. You mm. can buy Sam Rockwell's second, second head. head for the half odd Beeble Brock's second head. And it's not that much from I mean, the movie. Wait, not wait, that wait, much. What, what do you mean when not that much? I believe it's uh, somewhere in the two thousand dollar range. The which, actual like how many heads do they make? Uh, probably, you know, a yeah, dozen. I don't know if that's a very attractive. <laughs> it's I, it, I love Sam Rockwell. I love Hitchhiker's Guide. I actually think the movie is fine. But I don't love that bit in it. The movie, the movie in a world where there weren't 50 million other in adaptations <laughs> of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that movie would be great. Yes. But that there's no way you can make a Hitchhiker's Guide. Douglas Adams was right that you can't make a Hitchhiker's, Hitchhiker's Guide movie that's going to please the fans. I believe that he actually, am I right that I read this, that he actually wrote the first draft of the screenplay of the film we saw? Oh, yeah. 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 He was involved right up until the point of his untimely, oh. early and tragic demise. You know, um, one of the things, one of the nice things about knowing Neil Gaiman, who's a good friend of mine, is the things he gets, I get to hear him tell me about other oh, people God. I admire. Like, he, he was good friends with Adams and just well, talks he, about him being the he, sweetest guy alive. He wrote a biography of Adams that was the first thing I read by Neil Gaiman when I was probably 14. So that would have been in like 1988 or 89. <laughs> yeah. And... It's called Don't Panic. It's the story of the BBC radio plays and the books that were written simultaneously yeah. and how that whole thing. It's a fantastic read. If you want to find out more about Hitch- Hitchhiker's Guide, first go listen to the radio plays because yeah. they're wonderful. You can get them on Audible or Amazon. I have never listened to them. I've oh. read all the books twice, but I've never listened the, to the radio plays. So it's you realize like the the the, the, the gist of the whole thing is that Douglas, they were writing those Literally, they were writing pages at the end of episodes as the beginnings of, of those episodes were being recorded on the soundstage. <laughs> so, yeah. so like they, they were. That sounds about like broadcast television. Yeah. Yeah. And and then the books came out of the plays, but he fixed the stuff in the books that he didn't like in the plays because it was all the last minute. And he was like, oh, yeah, this would be a much better resolution for this. Oh. And then they did audio books of the books. Right. That were different. That than were the different than radio the plays. plays. Yeah, I know. And I remember it reading him saying, "There's not a single form of Hitchhiker's Guide that's I, that's similar to any other form." Oh no, no, it's all wonderful. <laughs> it's all um, really good. There's a great bit about shoes. The other thing that uh, Gaiman told me, and I was, I don't know why I was surprised by this, but he said he's never seen anybody in his whole life more gracious with the fans than Alan Moore. Really, I can see wow. that. He said Alan Moore taught him how to be gracious. Alan Moore sits and gives an interaction and talks to every single person who comes up to his table for an autograph and is just a picture of grace. It's funny because most of the time we read about Alan Moore on the internets, we're reading about what a cantankerous bastard he is. Is is this Alan Moore circa early 90s? I don't know. That's just a good question. I believe Neil's probably known Alan for quite a long time. Right. Yeah. Couldn't have been soured maybe. It could be. Could be. But, you know, I realize though, it's, it's nice to get that other side of the man because you realize that maybe he reserves his ire for suits and I mean, I, not I, for fans. I right? would like to, that's what I want to believe yeah. is that if you're wearing a necktie, then you know, you deserve my rat. <laughs> Otherwise we're cool. Hey, what are these boxes in front of us? Um, are these are watching the video. Yeah. I, uh, uh, I picked these up. There's one for you and one for Will. Um, these are actually identical in pretty much every way to some of the food containers from the dinner scene in Alien. You mean when they first wake up yeah. and they're, oh, wow. Yeah, I oh, have some fantastic. taller ones, too. Really hard to find. These are Rosetti Me- Rosti Mepal, M-E-P-A-L, um, from 2007, uh, and I bought a case of them. I don't need a case of them. So hence, well, thank you. My loss is your gain. They um they look a lot like the OXO. Yeah. Uh, the uh, kind of oval square. So containers. when you were looking for them, was it because of the lid had that certain? Like, it was it opening? was a combination of the rectangular, tall, clear. Here we go, so people can see it. 
clear plastic uh, container with the framed white mm. lid in top. And this is, you look at Alien, and there they are. They're all pouring themselves cereal and stuff right out of stuff like this. You two can have breakfast like a space trucker. Absolutely. I want to have breakfast. I, I worry how that breakfast is going to end. <laughs> oh, it'll probably be fine. <laughs> what could possibly go what wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Uh, we had a question from a reader, which unfortunately I don't have in front of me because, uh, well, anyway. Listener, I guess. Not <laughs> even a reader. internet. Yeah, internet. Um, because it got lost in the thousands of emails. Uh, but the question was a good one. Uh, we have talked a lot of times about tools that you should buy when you're starting out and your approach to buying tools, um, which just to sum up, in case you don't want to go back and listen no, to the episode, no, which no. you should, what well, seemed to be get the tools for the stuff you're working on right now. Don't spend a lot of money on stuff that you're not going to use frequently. If it's something you're going to keep forever, then get something good. Yeah, the good one. And yeah. I would add to that that if you if you think you need a tool, go buy the cheapest possible version of it and see if it's at all useful to you. And there are great resources for that. Um, going to Amazon and sorting by price, mm -hmm. eBay sorting by price. Um, or if you just want a 70% guarantee that your tool arrives working, go for Harbor Freight. There you go. It's a, the <laughs> ringing what, endorsement. What was the question? The question is, uh, the person requested an episode of this is the same thing, but for kitchen tools. Uh, kitchen so, tools. Yeah. So, you know, like... I'm of the opinion, and most of the chefs that I've known over the years use a one or two knives, right? So they have a big knife and a small knife. Yeah. Um, but knives are so much fun. Oh, knives are yeah. great. Oh, I love There's <laughs> There's nothing more magical than a great filleting knife that you can just kind of, like, the blade Work flexes around the, the flesh. It perfectly oh, it's so good. Honed it. Yeah. But so that's, that's, that's a later down the road right. purchase. Is the question that you approach the tools you have in the kitchen much like you approach the tools you have in the shop? That is a good question. Um... In terms of, you know, when you're starting out, get the cheap one that you can learn with. And well, then... I'd say that the gamut of quality is a narrower bandwidth than kitchen tools. I mean, you've got some, you can get some really cheapy stuff on some fronts, but like a flower sifter, a flower sifter is a flower sifter. Right. A colander it... is a colander is a colander. You know, they're all going to work pretty much the same. Well, and a lot of times on the kitchen stuff, you'll see, like I know, for example, America's Test Kitchen, who does great Absolutely. Kitchen product reviews. Yeah, People, they have a wonderful testing lab. Um, highly recommend. Like if you if you need a resource beyond this podcast, which you do if you want to learn how to cook, yeah, then you should subscribe to to Cooks Illustrated, which is the magazine, which is or, one of the great magazines oh, ever written. So Every good. time it shows up, I curl up in the bath with it for a good hour and a half and yeah. think about stuff to cook. It's so it's so good. It makes you just it's just it's just nice to read about. And it's not a food porny magazine. No, There's not no, tons no. of I wish there was, pictures. I wish there were other magazines that were written in this format. So in every issue, there's what, like 10 recipes? Um, it's somewhere. somewhere between eight and like 16, depending yeah. on which episode, which but, issue So it is. for each recipe, there's two things going on. On one, there's just the recipe. Here's how to make this great brisket. Mm -hmm. But on the other is like, what, 2,000 words on how they came about understanding that this was the best brisket. It, it, they it is, tried four different yeah. things along three different avenues and multiple tests. And I tried it with a sauce. I tried it without a sauce. And these are the things that how it tastes. We, we tried it starting at a high temperature and coming down to a low to finish. We tried a low the whole way through. They go through, they go through not just what they ended up with, but their whole testing process. So you understand, and they explain the science of what they found. In terms of both the technique, the texture, and the taste. So you can, look, cooking on one level can be quite easy. It can be like baking. You just follow a recipe and do what the recipes say. And different cookbooks are better and worse at writing a recipe that's easy to follow and delivers a result. Well, in that level... And at that level, the difficulty comes in understand decoding the lingo, right. so knowing that a julienne is a thin sliced chop of whatever, or knowing even as simple as things like yeah, if you're going to chop something, chop them all the same size so that they cook at the exact right. same rate. Those are little bits, but what Cooks does is you can either just follow the recipe and get a great meal, or you can learn the philosophy of the recipe, which allows you to improvise. It gives Sweet. you another and way. you know where the why. Yeah. This thing's well, happen. And once you know, for example, their high roast uh, bird uh, turkey technique is a wonderful way to cook a turkey. You start at a really high temperature and then once you get the outside to the kind of look that you want, you turn the oven way down and just let it go until it reaches the internal temperature yeah. you want. So that is a technique that once you learn that for one thing, you can apply it to beef and to right. pork and to anything else you want to cook. Um, so so that's the benefit of reading those other, that, 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 that 
the left page is what exactly. I was thinking of yes, it Yes, the left side of the page. Um, Go- going back to tools, we've yes. always said sometimes that uh, in a shop, for example, you can buy really expensive tools and really knife tools, but all the tools do is help you speed up your time. And that technique can, in some cases, so they actually they help you time, speed up your time and they aid in precision. In precision and two time. things. And in, Does that apply also to the kitchen where you can do most with the essential tools that you have, you can do mostly exactly the same thing, uh, but all the, the fancy gadgets that you buy, all they do is maybe reduce the time it takes or the, the amount of care, how careful you have to be. It's um, yeah, it's 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 about time management because you really could do almost anything you wanted with a set of measuring spoons, a measuring cup, a few bowls, and some basic utensils, like, and like a skillet and a frying pan. Yeah, and a, you can and do ninety five percent of what you'd need to do with that. Um, and to be clear and to be sure, as you'd expect, my wife and I have bought a lot of kitchen gadgets over the years. Um, you have a well-equipped kitchen. Is we what do, I would call but it. we we've also retired and given away a lot of those gadgets. As it turns out, eh, we didn't really need that. Like uh, Alton's theory, uh, Alton Brown's theory on this is pretty yeah. good. His his thing has always been that you don't buy gadgets that only do one thing. It has right. to be a multitasker, no unitaskers. Well, which is which is a good approach up to a yeah. point. I find among the things that I can't ever have too many of is you can't have too many baking sheets of different sizes. And with, with lips and with, with lips not and without. you can't have too much parchment paper. Boy, that is one that like that changed our lives. Parchment and wax of, paper are yeah, both always have. Totally. And a really inexpensive way to make your cleanup really trivial, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Um, I personally am addicted to little tiny Cups, finger cups, finger cups yeah. for uh, for creating the mise en place for a recipe. So the way my wife and I cook, she cooks more than I do. She is the much better cook, um, and so frequently I will be her prep cook. Mm-hmm. And the way I prep for her is she'll hand me a recipe, and I will line up every single ingredient in the order in that it's written, and it literally down to the butter, and I'll get oh, it yeah. to room temperature, and it's all sitting water. Pinch of salt, it's all lined up in little bowls. So all she has to do is dunk, 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 well, and roll. Just to be clear, that's how most restaurants work Absolutely. too. You, you yeah. do all your prep work. The difference is that they have the shared, you know, shared ingredients for all the stuff that they're making in one yeah. or two or three stations, but it lets you work much more efficiently. Like, so, I mean, I, I think the first place to start is a good knife. A good, absolutely. Um, Obviously a good knife, a good frying pan, a good uh, deeper. A nonstick. Nonstick, honestly, yeah. A pot. There is no need. We cook a ton. And the the pans that get the most use in our house are the eight inch and the 14 inch nonstick frying pan. Mm -hmm. And we buy the cheapest restaurant version for like, 15 bucks. Mm -hmm. They last for about a year until one of my kids or some guest in the house uses a metal utensil and scratches the crap out of it. And then we toss it in the garbage. Yeah, Even if you don't do that, eventually it ages out and you start to get bubbles. The one Test Kitchen recommends is a tea fowl that's like $20, $18. It's great. And it's it's no need to go any fancier than that for your basic egg frying pan, your meat frying pan, and that stuff. You the know, only thing you get by spending more money is a handle that you can put in the oven, which you probably shouldn't do with a nonstick. Well, yes, and you can get uh, honestly when you start to move up in frying pans, a really good seasoned cast iron pan allows you to do to get some much crisp cornbreads, mm-hmm. and you know, cooking. Uh, Thomas Keller has a chicken recipe, or you cook it in the frying pan in the oven, and it's fantastic, and you get a result with that thicker frying pan that you just can't get with. But, but used and buy that at, at a swap or yeah. an antique store. store or something like that. But as far as gadgets, what are the gadgets that, that like people wouldn't expect? I'm just thinking this out loud. Yeah. That are really, really handy. I personally love the, uh, the mandolin. mandolin. Oh, see, I, I would think it's better for taking off little slices of your fingers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can do ma- major hospital level damage really quickly. <laughs> yeah. See, I put the mandolin on the on the list of things like I use it when I make pe- uh, French fries. Uh, almost every other time, it's much faster for me to just chop something with the knife. I actually, you know what? I went out and I bought a fry cutter. Really? Like the Funk, Funk? one of those? Yeah. And um, it's actually not a brilliant one. It wasn't that expensive. It was not a brilliant one. I actually want to buy a better one because I did some, uh, we had a Top Chef style competition fundraiser at our house last year for mm-hmm. my kid's school. And I researched a bunch of different methods and tried five different ones to hone in an ideal recipe for sweet potato fries. Mm. 
And okay. the fry cutter is absolutely critical for this. Because you have to have them the same size. Yeah. They yeah. always they have to be the same size. And it is really straightforward. Sweet potatoes. Cut them into fry shapes, soak them in water for an hour. That brings the starch out. Mm -hmm. Dry them off, pat them off, put them in a paper bag, and cornstarch coat them all. Mm. Oh. The padding is really key because you don't want the cornstarch to be a goopy mess on them. You want them to be dusted. Mm -hmm. The um, Removing the starch and adding the cornstarch will actually help you crisp up the outside. And to get that bifurcated, crispy outside. Mushy, mushy sweet potato, inside. awesome inside. Yeah, fluffy. Then you take them. You heat up a, 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 a saute pan uh, with uh, vegetable oil to just under 400 degrees, like so 390. Smoking or shimmering? Uh, no, not smoking, but okay. definitely shimmering. It's hot. Okay. Like my candy thermometer doesn't go higher than 400, right? <laughs> so it starts beeping. When it beeps, I know it's ready. So just around 400 degrees, and I throw in a handful at a time, um, but it, and then cook them for exactly five minutes. Okay. And scoop them into a paper bag, throw just in some salt. Just one cook, though? One cook. Oh, and really? I got to tell you, they're phenomenal. Interesting. I'll My sweet that. potato fries are incredible. Um, and it's that simple. Sorry. But it's okay. that's a fry cutter. And because I love that food, I'm happy to have that thing. I store it in the basement. But that's the kind of thing that that if you, once you start cooking, you'll quickly learn what you use frequently. Yes. My wife and I like to make pizza. So we bought a, a fancy pizza, pizza stone, right? Right, right. And right. a peel and the whole, all the stuff that goes with that. If you're not going to make, if you make pizza once and you're not into it, you will know, and that's that's money and space wasted. Yeah. Um, like vegetable peelers, a good vegetable that, peeler, a ceramic blade. It's worth 20 bucks for a vegetable peeler. Totally, totally, totally. Vegetable peelers, you're going to use it more than any other thing. And by the way, go and get the bright one. Yeah. Because if it's black, like all the other stuff in your drawer, mm. the vegetable, I, I, Drives me crazy looking for the vegetable peel until I bought an OXO orange one. So I bought a, I have an orange one that is not the kind that you hold and peel across. It's you run it down. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah right. That horizontal. thing is amazing. Like your vegetable peeler should be as sharp as every knife in your, in your yeah. drawer. It should be a physical threat to your well being. <laughs> um, but yeah, like d d the pots and pans, get a set of like cheap revere wear. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Just, just uh, pots. With the handles, yeah, it's just it's all they are. Yeah, you don't need to go out and spend four hundred dollars on all clad or revere. You really don't. Like that. You won't just, notice the difference. Uh, most people. Is that something you can get at a restaurant supply store, or do you want to get stuff? If you have a restaurant supply I store, I love restaurant supply. But stores. you're going to pay more at the restaurant supply store because that stuff is is made to last. Sure. And the revere wear stuff is made to be used once a day and last twenty years. I'll tell you something else. If uh, if you're if you're trying to buy a gift for someone who likes to cook, there is a never fail gift for someone who likes Ooh. to cook. Cutting board. Cutting boards are great. No cook will ever feel like they've got too many cutting boards. I'm sure we're going to have some write in and say, I have too oh many cutting God. boards. But frankly, like when we are rolling in our kitchen and we've seen video of the kitchen on Tested, um, it, I've got a bunch of counter spaces and being able to like give every single person a task. I And Etsy is an amazing resource for some homemade, home laminated chopping blocks that are gorgeous. I bought one recently for not that much with a stainless steel tub in the end, so you can chop, 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 and Ooh, put it in. That's great. Yeah, I love, the, I love the the thin, like the, it's just like a single layer of that laminate stuff that they like glue together. Yeah, um, and you can put it on top, like when you're when you're cooking, when you're cutting chicken or something yeah. like that. You can put it on either on the counter by the sink, which is convenient, or you can put it on top of your other cutting board, so you don't have to wash the chicken every single time right. you don't right. want to put right. meat on the wood right well you know putting meat on the wood is fine don't listen oh. have you you guys should this is this is in your alley yeah it's true um the the meat on the wood it's i've fine. just used lemon and salt for years to clean my meat you've eaten plenty of food off of my meat on wood chopping all blocks right. Right. no problem <laughs> no extra arms um uh, what about organizing do you like, um, I'm gonna say mixing bowls. Like, nested mixing bowls nested, are another nested can't mixing miss. bowls are worth their weight in gold. Yeah. You can never have too many bowls. Right. A big and small, you can never have too many cutting boards. Um a, a decent chef's knife, a decent paring knife. And the, again, those aren't hard to get good quality ones for 20, for not 20 that bucks much. for the yeah. I mean you can once you decide you're gonna do this, go out and buy the Henkels. They're great. Absolutely. But, but the Victorinox is a lovely, lovely blade. They use it on America's Test Kitchen every week. It works. Right. It's a good it's a good knife and it holds its edge really well. Absolutely. Um Take care of your care and well, and so you, you said organization. Yeah. I, I will say organization is a real bugbear because everyone has different amounts of space. Um, a dedicated drawer or a couple of drawers for measuring devices is really, really mm. ideal. Like we have, actually, we have countless numbers of uh, half a cup, 
quarter cup, three nesting, quarters cup, yep. nesting. We also have weird sizes, one third cup, two thirds cups, those sort of sizes. Do you cal? So I started calibrating those when they come in just to make sure. Oh, really? I bought, and I want to say it was an OXO years ago that I used and it was off. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like the half cup measure was a little bit less or a little bit more. Oops. You know, Julia was working from job. a recipe for ice cream recently we bought an ice cream maker oh that's dangerous i know you could have just gotten a thing a liquid nitrogen doer you know the problem was we have the ice cream attachment for the this sounds so stupidly opulent but we have the ice cream attachment for the hamilton beach the oh oh you not the the mixer beach but the mixer yeah yeah and um it it stopped working like it worked sometimes and it didn't work other times we have it in a freezer i don't know maybe our freezer it's a long story at any rate um we we um our toaster crapped out. So we bought a little convection oven, which is actually a magnificent little device and a really nice adjunct. We've had this. I don't want to get it. We don't like, you know, I think think if you're in a, in a small kitchen, the toaster oven is a waste of space. Oh, I'm not, I'm actually, Julie and I have been using this thing so much. We were like, if you had a choice of one thing, this might be it. You can do a lot uh, with the toaster. Uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> At any rate, when she was You've getting the, the toaster oven, now. she got uh, an ice cream maker. We were making tons of ice cream. But that's not the point of my story. The point of my story was this guy's recipe said, use X number of cups of this stuff or X ounces. Like, and those scale. two were totally different. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, so I was going to say, if you're going to do, if you're going to get serious about cooking, the first real, there, there's two pieces of tool instruments you need. A one piece. is a good digital scale. A digital scale. And one is a, yeah. a, a a great digital thermometer. An instant read digital thermometer will change your life. And that one that folds out, what is that The one? Thermapen. The Thermapen. It's pen. So fabulous. Do you have one of those? I have three of them. Yeah. They're, they're, you, you literally stick it into whatever you're trying to measure. It registers before you can look. Yep. And it, it's, I think it's three tenths of a second or something Alton like that. Alton swears by them. Um, they make different ones for yeah. different things. So uh, it's fun as shooting the laser. Yeah. The laser is useless though for food. It only tells you the surface yes, temperature. It's for the, water. Yeah. The, 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 the thermopens are fantastic. We've got, yeah, we've got a bunch of them. Uh, um, I mean, they are, they are expensive. It is a lovely gift to give someone who wants Absolutely. to cook in your life. It's like a hundred bucks. <laughs> they sometimes do them on sale. Um, it is a tool that will last an entire lifetime. By um, all when reports. you say care, I would say that nothing is worse than trying to clean out someone's um, nonstick frying pan of some slow cooked scrambled eggs that have been uh, uh, not so. <laughs> no. um, and I would point out bartender's friend. Bartender's friend is great. It's an for- amazing cleaning product mm-hmm. for exactly that kind now, of thing. Tracy told me when we were doing the egg thing yeah. that you should season your s- stick pans. And we should try this. Yeah, because she had a way of seasoning it, which involved like heating it up until it was black, and then cleaning it out, then heating it up until it was. And she said, if you did that three times, you'd never have to scrape anything off again. Yeah. which sounds really nice to me. I, I I think it's worth trying. I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, the uh, uh, the digital scale. Digital scale, digital scale to weigh ingredients. Totally phenomenal. Especially if you're going to do any kind of baking is super vital because measuring baked a bit, the same amount of flour by volume can be like at 20% either side. Absolutely. Depending on the and, relative humidity I mean, and all that really stuff. really a stickler about yeah. that How heavy because of that. What be uh, two pounds is probably, uh, two kilograms rather is a, is a good, That's this is the one yeah. I use most of the time. If you're going to do a lot of meat, then you might want more. And I, I'm going to go ahead and head off the complaints about the $100 thermometer. If you're cooking a piece of meat, if you buy a nice piece of meat for Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever, right. if you buy a $50 turkey, which isn't impossible Not these days, yeah. if you buy a, a big giant T-bone roast or, or a rib roast or anything that's a nice expensive piece of meat, you're going to have 50 or 60 or $70 worth of meat. And if the $100 thermometer saves you from ruining two of those money that you know you've saved yourself a bank. lot of heartache yeah i yeah. totally agree um uh, it's also easy to it's it's a brilliant design and really really robust you can also get in if you if that's too much for you you can get an instant read thermometer for about ten dollars it has a dial on it you calibrate it by putting it in boiling I, water i believe they make one that plugs into the iphone oh <laughs> no that was terrible. no iphone stuff <laughs> the, the, the iphone stuff it's just it's it's first order retrievability, right? Right. It's that you have to have the thing, and then you also have to have your phone out. Right. And oh, I'm wait, always a short a hand anyway. Yeah. So I I stay away from the iPhone connected stuff. That's that is gimmicky. a very reasonable plan. Um, a roasting pan is great. 
you can get away with the with the aluminum disposable ones from the grocery store when you're first starting out. Um, I love the uh, lasagna trays for all sorts of things, for baking and Pyrex, for prepping and Pyrex. Yeah, a, a good Dutch oven is a like we. I got a Le Creuset for Christmas a few ten years ago now. It is probably the most used piece of cookware in our house because yeah. you can you can saute stuff in it, and then when you're ready to turn, if you're making chili, you saute the meat. You brown the meat, you chuck all your vegetables in, and then you just boil it. If you're yeah. making a casserole, you can start it up in the, on the range, move it into the oven. It's great. Um, and the but one, you can use the non, you don't have to get the ceramic one. You that looks like say stuff one. is, there's no, there's no bullshit about it. It's wonderful, wonderful stuff. It's expensive. The only thing that annoys me about that is that they use it on all the cooking shows and the cooking shows get new supplies every three months. So it oh, always yeah. looks brand new. Yes. When you see one that's actually been used. Oh, it's, it's all brown. And yeah, but, but that's OK. Absolutely. Yeah. Ours are beat to hell. Yeah. But it's it works perfect. Oh, yeah. Probably better because there's the pores are filled in with. Oh, they're wonderful. Yeah, it's wonderful. a wonderful piece of tool. Um, what else? What else? Uh, we haven't talked about power stuff at all. Like the stand mixer, I think, is one of the great traps of the kitchen. You know, your, 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 your stand mixer is one of those things that everybody thinks, oh, I should get a stand mixer. <laughs> but it turns out you rarely use a stand mixer. Unless you're into baking. If you bake a lot. If you yes. bake a lot. And we do. So Julia does. So absolutely. The, we the, use the, a stand the kitchen mixer aid, all the kitchen the aid, Yeah. That's like, it, yeah, okay. They're like 300 bucks. Yeah. If you, if you, Costco has a cheaper one. So get the good one. If you're going to buy one of those, don't buy the one with the flip top, the, the tilt top, because it has a lower, lower torque motor. And eventually you'll separate the grease and burn the Ah. whole thing up. If you, if you make like pizza dough in it, for example, I see. Um, if you, or ice cream, if you are, um, get the one with the handle that cranks up and lifts the whole motor up. Um, the food processor, food processor is great for making like soups. It's amazing for soups. That's what I love the blender for. Blender's great for soups. You can do dough in the food processor. You can you can chop 15 cucumbers in about 35 seconds. Yeah. Um I, we use the food processor a lot, but it took a long time to get there. We don't use a food processor nearly as much. We use the um I make pizza sauce and and uh and like I'll I'll puree tomatoes in the food processor because well, it's fast. One of the nice things that happened in the past 10 years is because cooking has become much more of an American sport, mm-hmm. um things like the Vitamix have gone down in price. That's true. And that variable speed Vitamix blender is a masterpiece. I just I, we use that thing almost every other day. See, I've never gotten to the point that I can we we went food process. I think I think at some point, you know, like in the early 90s you go either grunge or rap, right? Oh, if you go food processor right, or right. blender. Do you buy for your blender extra extra uh, vessels? Not yet. Well, we ended up with two for some strange reason. So I use I go back and forth with both vessels, but I'm also very assiduous about cleaning it out very quickly. I like the stick blender as a starter because it's a twenty bucks, yes. and you can you can fix a lot of crimes with a stick blender. We have one. We have not yet used it. Really? I just I got it well, for you, I got you have it for a real Christmas. blender though, so it's a different thing. Yes, like if you don't if you haven't shelled out for a blender, then like it, it you can fix gravy if you when, get lumpy gravy. One of the uh, one of the when is this airing? When are we gonna uh, next week probably next week? All right, pretty close. Um, I I've invested recently in um, some screens. Uh, some sieves like panning for gold. Well, sieves? it's a, uh, uh, so there's this amazing website, um, run by, uh, one of the guys who, uh, co-wrote Nathan Mirvold's modernist cuisine, okay. uh, called chef steps. I don't know if you know, chefs hmm. really, really awesome site, ChefSteps.com. They're based up in Seattle at Pike's market. They've got like 2000 square feet of experimental space. Wow. And they do lots of modernist cooking and they release these videos that have no sound. I mean, no narration. It's just music and watching someone take potatoes, cut them into a size, put them in a bag, sous vide them, puree them, put them through a screen to get a certain type of puree. Wow. And then serving them at that. And it's just like your mouth starts to water watching these videos. And they've used screens a bunch recently um, for things like making soups and getting really fine textures. And I've now reached the limit of what the Vitamix can do in terms of getting a, mm. you know, a restaurant quality yeah. soup texture. And I want that because I, we make a ton of soups, hot and cold soups in the house. It's like one of my favorite things. Soups are wonderful. Soups are so good. Like a, like a cucumber gazpacho and stuff like that. <sighs> I, oh yeah. Since, since it's 80 degrees outside right now, that sounds really nice. Doesn't it? Um, there's this, did we talked about plenty? No, the cookbook. It's a vegetarian cookbook, which honestly I would give up meat if all my food could taste this good. But more than that, as I said, there are different cookbooks which 
are better and, and worse at giving you a high quality product. We've cooked about probably half of the Plenty Cookbook at this point, and not a single thing hasn't come out insanely good. Wow. Like not just good, but like the the taste com the taste juxtapositions are like a restaurant quality where you're like, mm, there's a little nut and then a little tang on the top of it instead of like what I make, which is all like, mm, it's purple and mushy. And salt. <laughs> yeah. I can taste salt. <laughs> um, cookbooks are tough. Like, like, especially if you're starting out, I think everybody's parents gave them the better homes and gardens, the red checkerboard. Yeah. Cloth yeah. Wire. And don't, I mean, don't get that now. It, it hasn't aged well. No. Um, but the America's Test Kitchen, America's best, new Test best Kitchen, recipe. You can't go wrong with America's Test Kitchen, back issues of Cooks Illustrated. Yeah. Um, and I, sorry. Or subscribe we'll, to their website. They, they have a website that you can pay like $10 a month and get all the recipes for. So good. Um, that, that stuff, like if you want staples, if you want to know how to make meatloaf and spaghetti and even like hamburgers and stuff like that, they'll, they'll kind of walk you through that. And they do it with, without a lot of lingo, which I think is really helpful. Absolutely. Now, at the top end, you could go with Thomas Keller. Oh, yeah. Who's incredible at explaining in great detail both the method and the science of what you're doing so it's not like you have to parse a tremendous amount of like f f like i don't know what he means by this he'll actually tell you but they're not simple recipes like when his cookbook ad hoc at home which is supposedly his simple recipes it's like there's not a single one of those without 30 ingredients yeah, four days <laughs> four days of prep you have to start by going out to the farm and getting the meat oh, fresh from the cow criminy. um alice waters art of simple food or art of simple cooking. I can't remember yeah. is, is a, um, it's a, it's a classic cookbook. It is the exact opposite of Tom of the Thomas Keller book. It's three, maybe four ingredients yeah. per recipe. It's here's how to poach a piece of salmon, you know? And then there's a lot of, it, it's very Berkeley in a lot of ways, Yeah, but you will, you will be able to make very good food very quickly if you follow those recipes. And, and she, she also advocates like some really simple stuff. That's kind of fun, like planting a little herb garden for yourself that you can put on the windowsill in your oh, kitchen nice. and, and stuff like that. It's a lovely cookbook, but we were going back to tools. So is there anything we haven't covered um, in tools? Let's see. Toasters, toasters. I'm beginning to see the merits of the toaster oven now that we have three people in the house. And That's we three the thing. It's like toast. when you want to cook like eight or ten pieces. I have also started broiling. Yeah. Like pre-buttering. Yeah. And broiling. You're making Texas toast, I think, is the technical well, term Well, so for it's that. like because I, I love cooking breakfast. We've talked about this mm -hmm. endlessly. And I love it specifically when I have like five or six people in the house and I got to get six omelets out simultaneously. Yeah. Do you have a griddle? I do have a. Uh, no, I have a grill. Okay. On the wolf on the wolf range. It doesn't have a griddle. Oh, I wish it did. You know, the pizza stone, the pizza steel people have released a version of the steel that you flip over and has a grease tray on it. Oh, really? And it's like smooth, polished finish. So, yeah. <laughs> of course, we could just go get some inch, quarter inch thick pizza sheets of steel. Yeah. Bring them in here, slap them on the mill and finish it ourselves. They'll <laughs> I'll see you in about 12 hours. No, that wouldn't take 12 hours. Okay. You could, you have to separately clamp for each of the four runs and be pretty precise, but you could do that in about an hour. Okay. That's not too bad. No. Little, um, uh, little, uh, little round end milling bit. There. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. The Frying pans, bowls trays uh yeah we can't stress the the parchment like, enough i almost think the dutch like if you're gonna if you're only gonna get one thing to cook in that's like a gadget the dutch oven is a is a like you, you can use the dutch oven instead of a frying pan instead of a saucepan this is true um it's big and heavy if you're gonna do baking um yeah. double boiler is pretty key or you can and just put a glass pyrex bowl on top of the can. top of your saucepan um, I actually, I find that often works better, especially than cheap double boilers. Cause sometimes a cheap double boiler has too much contact between the edges of the pan oh, and it gets, and, too, the, and it gets too hot on the sides. Um, I will say that there, there's a gadget I had for a while, which was a deep fryer, which mm -hmm. I loved until you use that just a little bit. And all of a sudden, every time you use it, your whole house smells like oh. a deep fryer. So I've actually gone back to just using a frying pan, a deep frying pan. I have a deep fryer that lives in the, in the, in the garage. Just yeah. so that it doesn't, because you know what? When you it's when, when all your, when your tool is a hammer, everything you want, to yeah, fry everything, everything, everything. Hey, yeah, oil, a couple more fried ice cream. I made some uh, tempura fried hot dogs the other night. Oh, that's pretty good. That's I and tempura turns out. It, no one quite tells you this clearly, but tempura is ludicrously simple. It's just is it all on the batter? It's one cup of flour, one egg, one cup of water. Mix it with chopsticks. You want it lumpy. 
Hmm. But more than that, the water that you use, that you pour in should be ice cold. I mean, literally like you should have a big thing of ice water that you've let sit for half an hour before you pour out your one cup of water Hmm. and then mix it in a metal bowl that's sitting in another metal bowl with ice and salt. You want your mixture for tempura to be super cold. It actually helps it adhere to your vegetables or your hot dog and throw it in again, hot oil, uh, like 380. Uh And yeah, these were stunning. Uh, This is not my technique. It's a Japa dog in Vancouver. It was one of the greatest roadside hot dogs in history. Well, but it's, I mean, that's that, that whole thing, like the, using the chopsticks, a lot of times you'll read the recipe and be like, ah, I don't, it seems like I'll just use my fork and it's not going to be right. Yeah. Like there's, when you're first starting out, Follow the recipe. Yeah. Follow the, the instructions are there for a reason. I can't remember who it was we were talking to, but um, when one of our one of our chef friends went off on the well, I made this, but I substituted this for this. And I'm like, well, if you're not going to make the recipe, then just just you know make your own thing. That's cool. That's awesome. That's great. But don't bitch about the recipe being bad if you went <laughs> in you and didn't follow things. the recipe. <laughs> so this is true. Yeah. Um, cooking is a lot of fun. It's good. It is. A, I'm sure we're going to get lots of suggestions for key kitchen tools. Yeah. The um, Let's see. Well, let's run down the list as I remember it. A decent chef's knife. D- 20 bucks. Without a doubt. Uh, mixing bowls. Mixing I, bowls. I like having non and plastic. Eight inch or 10 inch frying pan. Yep. A, a stick. Cheap. Cheap frying pan as well is yep. good. Or or cast iron. That's a good place to use your a cast good iron. Thermometer. Good thermometer. Good um, thermometer. Peeler. A scale. A scale. Mm-hmm. Um, Parchment paper. Oh, roll of parchment. Spatulas and wooden spoons. Yes, so not you, wooden spatulas. You but can never, you can never spatulas. have enough spatulas and wooden spoons and mixing spoons. Honestly, a whisk is good too, but you can use a fork and a pinch. I yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, you can't. I I, I wouldn't try and make whipped cream with a fork. Uh, yeah, I would just get a siphon and use the that to make whipped cream. It's way easier. A siphon. Yeah, you know the 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 whipper. The oh whip, oh know. no, I like the hand. It's way too much work. You're no, crazy. no, no. Actually, I think I had a contest against. One of my kids, they were making whipped cream and they went and got the mixer with the attachments and everything. At the same amount of time, I just got heavy cream and threw it in a bowl and started doing it. I won. The problem with the mixer <laughs> and whipped cream is that you make butter half the time. Well, you, you can go be, too far. The, the line is very, yeah. the bad line is very small. Um, avoid mixers and food processors and stuff like that when you're starting out. You probably don't need it. When, by the time you need it, you'll know. Yeah. Oh, and can I talk about my least favorite gadget? Yeah, of course. The juicer. Hold on now. What kind of juicer are you talking about? Any like kind the of kind of you jam a Any avocado kind of juicer. in? Because what do you do? You drink your juice and then no one you spend it. like half an hour cleaning your juicer yeah. for every glass of juice you make. So I have the old kind of like thing that you put half the orange on yeah. and then oh. just clamp it. Yeah. That thing's amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, No, and I've got one of the- uh, A the, reamer. The ones of that yeah. uh, the, the it Michael spins. Graves. Yeah. No, no. Oh. It's just, it's a little, it's like a little bullet on three legs, like a tripod. Oh, you got one of those? Yeah, it's great. I actually oh. love that thing. Does it actually but we work? also have the motorized one that yeah. underneath your orange half, and that's great for making lime juice, lemon juice, yeah. and orange juice. <laughs> yeah, we use that thing all the time. Those squeezy ones are okay, too. Squeezy ones are yeah, fine. Oranges. Um, I'm trying to think what else, what other stuff. The stuff that I hate is like, the you know, the one dumb thing that I should hate that's wonderful. You know those things that you jam into the top of a strawberry to get the the, <laughs> yeah. the flower part out, the, yeah. the green part? You can just jam it in there. You could do a pint of strawberries in like 10 minutes yeah. with that thing. It is super oh, duper like dumb. A cherry, a, like a cherry pitter, too. I felt like such a loser when I realized how great those were. And I'm sitting there oh, yeah. making Wait, a cherry pie. Um, it just, uh, it's got a little bowl with a hole in it and you got a little thing that punches the it pushes it straight the through the right through. a lot of the meat though no no just just the cherries yeah, it's, not if the cherries are right it's pretty wow. good the one i didn't feel so bad when i was watching uh america's test, test kitchen one day and christopher kimball who is the least at uh, least impressed by gadgets person i think yeah. i've ever seen <laughs> yeah. um Busted out his apple peeling and coring mechanism, which is one of those old tiny ones. Oh yeah, you spike the apple oh, on the it, thing, <laughs> and you turn it, and the apple turns, and then it comes off with no. And I was like, if he's okay with that, that excuses a lot of the tar- so terrible things I've have done. We, have, have we covered the uh, peel uh, an entire head of garlic in twenty seconds? Technique? The shaking the yeah. tooth. I've never gotten that to work. Oh, is it? What's the I get it to work every single time. So, so you, this is the thing. Yeah, take garlic, take yep. a head of garlic. You want to peel it. Mm-hmm. I can do it in 20 seconds. The whole head. The whole head. Every single clove. Every clove. What? So 
Crush it so that the cloves are separated. Okay. Put them between two large stainless steel mixing bowls. Yeah, like ideally, I think the YouTube videos always show like big prep bowls. Basically. Yeah, like so they make the, it's the salad large at the House eight, of Primary Blue. inch. Well, you put bowls. them between them. Between, between them. So like clamshell yep. between them, holding onto the edges. Clank, 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 clank. It's loud as it's so crazy. So it's, it's a how big open. It's it's yeah. the the two open faces okay. facing yeah. each other. So it's yeah. this interior yeah. space. Bang, 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 bang. Twenty seconds. Turn it up. They'll all be perfectly peeled. Uh, there's a corollary. You have never gotten this to work? I've never gotten it to work. Oh, wow. I maybe didn't use a big enough pot. Maybe. You, I think the flexibility of the steel is a key part of this, but I'm not uh, positive about that. But there's Julia sent me another one the other day of somebody peeling an entire the toilet brush bucket full of pa yes, potatoes. Yes, I was going to bring it up. <laughs> with it's a toilet brush. We have to try to the it. End of a drill. Oh, and so he in a bucket of water. He said it was a new toilet brush. First. <laughs> Your results may vary. Yeah, it's but a bit he, nutty. <laughs> <laughs> he took a drywall mud bucket and put the put a, a ten pounds of potatoes in yeah. there, and filled it, it with water. Yep, yeah, and just let her rip. And with it, with a toilet brush on the end of a drill, and it's just. You could see him cycling, and the water was brown at first, and then it got cleaner and cleaner and cleaner, Starchier, and literally like yeah. four minutes, they were all perfectly peeled. It was amazing. I, I'm going to try it. We'll try it. We'll totally do video. should try it. Um, I think on that note, I can't <laughs> I think, think of anything else. We're gonna toilet brush with. is the most and strangest of your kitchen implements, and yet twine, twine, uh huh. A little twine is fifty cents worth of twine. Trussing the chicken, yeah, one of the easiest things to make really good chicken. It's a significant. A notable difference because you are keeping the extremities from drying out. You're making it into a single unified thing. And it's just, it's yeah. And and it takes 30 seconds. Yeah. If that. Yeah. It's, um, there's no mystery to it. It's, and there's no technique that's right or wrong. As long as you're trusting it up, you're good. Measuring spoons, measuring cups. Yep. Um, I think that's everything. Saucepan, baking, sauce pan, sheet. baking yeah. sheets. Um, I'll tell you one thing that I've started paper. to do now that we all have printers that are also copiers and fax machines and telex machines, et cetera, is that when I'm copying a recipe, I go and take the cookbook upstairs and I make a copy of it so that I don't have to have the cookbook open. I know it sounds a little precious. Hold on. Yes. I've got one better. Yeah. Every recipe that we make that we like, we yeah. take a photo of or we go to the website and send it to Evernote. So oh. I have an Evernote notebook full nice. of recipes. That's really good. With the complete everything we've made for the last yeah. uh, since I started doing this six yeah. months ago, and um, and you can share them with people via email. It's really easy. I like that. It's a. It's a. And then it, we just have it. It's on the iPad when you're in the kitchen. The iPad is a surprisingly indestructible kitchen device. I I totally. I have a bunch of recipes on Evernote, but I haven't put them together like that. I think that's a great idea. Um. There you go. Maybe we can share some. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll send some <laughs> over. Okay. Um, we'll be back next week with another episode of Still Untitled. I think next week we will have a Planet of the Apes spoiler cast. Yes. If everything goes well. Bum, bum, bum. So, um, and then Comic Con the week after that, right? Yeah. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. We'll uh, see you guys next week. And uh, as always, if you like us, leave us a comment, post a review, uh, upvote, downvote, whatever. We love you guys. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Later. Bye. Bye.